Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host, David Tear, And today I'm going to talk about the low shoe square, which is uh, just another name for um, the three by three magic square or the order three magic square. Um, and uh, here's a picture of it. This was discovered a really long time ago, around 2800 BC in China. Uh, so it's very ancient. And uh, each of these figures in this uh, picture represents a number. Um, you just count the number of points. Uh, I guess they didn't have our current number system, so they used figures with number of points representing numbers. So you can see, for instance, the bottom row is 816, uh, and then the number in the middle is 5. But anyway, here's a, here's a more standard uh, representation of the uh, low shoe square. Um, with Arabic numbers in it, and I'm sure you guys have all seen this at some point, and it turns out to be the uh, unique normal uh, order three magic square, and I'm going to prove that it's unique, up to rotations and reflections. Um, so, uh, and just a little bit more history, uh, the Chinese had a legend about a turtle with a square on its back. I don't know the story, but um, I guess this turtle had some kind of mystical significance in their uh, in their culture um, but anyway uh, so what is a magic square maybe we should define a magic square first before we continue well it turns out that there are magic squares of order n for for every uh, positive integer n greater than or equal to three three is the smallest case um, so the low shoe square turns out is the unique um, order three magic square. And what, what properties does a magic square have to have? Well, if it's called a normal magic square, that means it has to have all the numbers from one to n squared on it, and each number exactly once. And not only that, but every row, every column, and each of the two long diagonals have to, have to add up to the same number, and that number is called the magic constant. And it's pretty easy to figure out what the magic constant is for a given uh, n greater or equal to three. Uh, the way you get it is you first sum up all the uh, entries of the square. That's easy because all the entries are from one to n squared. So you're just summing k, k going from one to n squared. That's a triangular number. There's a formula for those numbers. It's just one half times uh, n squared times n squared plus one in this case. But now we're dividing by n because Remember that there's n rows and n columns. So each row or each column, if you like, has to add up to the magic constant, which is the sum of all the squares divided by n, which is 1 half n times n squared plus 1. Voila. And uh, for n equals 3, that turns out to be equal to 15. So uh, a normal magic square of order 3 has to have magic constant 15. So now I'm going to uh, talk about how we can construct a low shoe square. I'm gonna I'm gonna construct it and show that it is unique. So um, what do we do first? Let's let's consider the number five first. I mean five is right in the middle, so you might think that has some special significance. So where can we place five? Well, it turns out since five is in the middle of all the numbers from one to five, nine, it can be paired with the most other uh, two numbers. Uh, combinations of two numbers, 1, 9, 2, 8, 3, 7, and 4, 6. As a matter of fact, of all the numbers from 1 to 9, it's the only number with that property. And, and because of that, the only place 5 can be is in the center of the square. Because uh, notice that the 5 uh, in the center, the center position of the square, is the only position in the square that belongs to exactly 4 um, lines that it has to belong to, namely uh, two rows, two columns, and uh, two uh, long diagonals. So, so the five has to go in the middle because uh, um, the the other uh, positions won't allow all four combinations. So um, anyway, yeah. So uh, um, anyway, uh, so we just should prove that five has to go in the middle. Let's look at one next. Where can one go? Well. Um, there's sort of up to up to rotations and reflections. There's only two possibilities. One can either go in a corner or it can go in the center of a row. And uh, let's try in a corner first. So uh, well, uh, notice that if it goes in a corner, 
It, we know that it already has to belong to the uh, same uh, long diagonal as 5, so we have 1, 5, 9. That's automatic. But then we we have to have a, uh, it has to belong to uh, um, uh, both a row and a, a unique row and a unique column, namely the top row. If you're putting one in the top uh, left, which you can do without loss of generality, since you can always rotate the square if you need to, uh, it has to belong to both uh, the um, um, diagonal, uh, the long diagonal with five, and it also has to belong to the top row and the left column. But that's not going to work because that means there have to be two other um, pairs of numbers besides five and nine that add up to 14. There's only one other one, that does, six and eight. Um, you can't duplicate the numbers. You can't have seven twice. So uh, so the only place one could go, the, the corner won't work. That means it has to go, if it's going to go anywhere, it has to go at the center of, a, of an edge. Well, um, and again, without loss of generality, we can assume that it goes at the center of the bottom edge. Uh, this will work because now there's only one other uh, row it can belong to, namely the bottom row, and the other numbers in that row are going to be six and eight. So uh, here we have the central column, uh, which I wrote as 9, 5, 1. And remember, another thing that's useful to know here, since 5 is in the center, that means that once we know where one of the numbers 1 through 4 goes, we automatically know where um, its partner goes. Its partner is just 10 minus that number because we know that besides 5, um, the pair of numbers uh, has to add up to 10. So we know that 9 has to go opposite 1, as I've shown here. So we've, we've done this part, and we're almost done now. Now we just have to know where everything else goes. Um, so we did 1, 5, 9. What can we do next? Uh, well, we already determined, I didn't draw it in the last slide, but we already determined that uh, the only other numbers that can go in the same row as 1 are uh, 6 and 8. And we could have written it as 6, 1, 8. It doesn't really matter because one's a reflection of the other. And remember, we don't care about reflections. So I'm just drawing the 8 on the left and the 6 on the right. It doesn't really matter. And once we've done that, then everything else is pretty much determined. I mean, uh, we, we, are, we know, for instance, that the 2 has to be opposite the 8. So the 2 has to be in the upper right entry. The 4 has to be opposite the 6. So 4 is in the upper left. What's left? Well, we have a 4 and an 8 in the, top, in the leftmost column. And the only other number that can go in the middle is 3 because the numbers have to add up to 15. And similarly, the 7 has to go um, in the uh, middle right, um, either because 3 plus 7 equals 10 or because 7 plus 2 plus 6 is 15. So this works. Voila. We've constructed the low shoe square, and we also showed that it's unique. Um, and um, before I say any more, I, I, maybe I should say a little bit about higher order magic squares. What's interesting to me is that the low shoe, the three by three, is unique. There's no two by two. That's interesting. There's no order two magic square. I mean, one be trivial. I guess there is an order one magic square, maybe. The square with just the number one in it, but nobody cares about that. Uh, there's no two by two. Um, there, there, it turns out there's 880 four by four. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably do another video on that later. But uh, the number the number of possible magic squares of order n grows very, very fast. And I think the number is only known up to order 5. Already by order 5, I think it's in the millions, maybe in the billions. Uh, but um, anyway, there's a lot of them, but there's, it's unique for order 3. It's a low shoe square. So anyway, that completes my video for tonight on the low shoe square. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.